that we would normally do at Easter time. And it'd be on Palm Sunday that we would go through this text because it's the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem, referred to as the, the triumphal entrance. It's, uh, it's what happened on Palm Sunday. Or, and and um, there's quite a bit of parade that takes place. And it's going to take us, uh, while the next week for Jesus is what we'll be covering in the rest of Mark, It'll probably take us several months to cover this territory as we try to watch Jesus as he's going into Jerusalem and observe his experiences. But it's interesting because one of the key themes of this and the title of the message is a house of prayer. The purpose of the temple, the reason why it was built was to be a house of prayer for all nations, a place where people could come, both Jews and foreigners, and seek God out and have their prayers answered and go there because they believed and saw and witnessed the fact that God answered prayer in that place, the temple of God. This morning, I, I wanna try to help you see a little bit of the picture. Uh, so uh, there's uh, gonna be a couple maps. <coughs> Click, please. Um, okay, this is a, let's see, which guitar should I use? The bass or the, okay, here. This is a map of, Jerus of, of Israel, okay? So it's a broad map, and the key things here is to note is that Sea of Galilee is up at the north, Dead Sea is at the south. Just to the north of the Dead Sea is Jericho, and here is Jerusalem, almost directly west of Jericho. Next slide, please. So Jericho is located right here. You actually come, there's a modern road now that comes down just like this and comes right into Jerusalem. There's actually two little dots. There are a red dot and a black dot right by Jerusalem. The black dot is actually for, Jer for Jerusalem. The red dot is actually for Bethphage and Bethany, which is that close. It's literally just two mile at the max walk from Bethphage and Bethany into Jerusalem. Next slide, please. Located just up from the Temple, temple Mount right here in Jerusalem is the Mount of Mount Scopus, which you're gonna see a slide just after this. And the Mount, Mount Olives is right here. Jesus would have come down a pathway like this right into the heart of the temple. And next slide, please. This is a picture actually from Mount Scopus uh, towards, if you were to look very carefully, some of you will recognize something right over here. Does anyone see what's there? You see a gold dome? That's the Dome of the Rock, okay? This is taken from Mount Scopus towards the south, actually. You can just barely see the Dome of the Rock. Next slide, please. Now we're actually on Mount Olives, um, actually right by the place where uh, Jesus, where they would have started with these branches and palm branches and, and been laying down their robes and all as Jesus was heading down here through the Mount of Olives, down towards the, uh, the Temple Mount. And incidentally, this is the Temple Mount. The dome you can't see because of the trees right there. This is uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque. Um, and, and the Temple Mount, you might remember, or, or might maybe you don't, uh, is controlled by Muslims right now. Uh, Jews are not allowed to go up there because the rabbi says we don't know exactly where the Holy of Holies was. We don't want you walking on that. Um, there are some places that um, soldiers and all go, but they're, even they are limited. And there's been some rioting, unfortunately, recently that's, that um, the Muslims have c closed down the Temple Mount. Next slide, please. This is now, we're walking down from the Mount, from Mount Olives. This would have been a path, very, very possible that Jesus walked on this pathway to head down into uh, the Temple Mount. So now again, you have um, the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque. And the interesting one right there is that's called the Eastern Gate. Oh, by the way, you've all heard the story on the Eastern Gate, right? The Eastern Gate is where Jesus is prophesied to come back into Jerusalem. So you'll notice a couple of things that have happened at the Eastern Gate. Um, all these, and you're gonna see this in one other picture too, all these are graves. They're Muslim graves. You know why they're there? Because you, because you would become unholy if you touched the dead, right? So the Muslims have placed graves there, blocked out, blocked the Eastern Wall because they may believe it more than the Jews and the Christians that the, that the Messiah will return through the Eastern Gate. 
they've taken precautions to try to keep him out. <laughs> Good luck on that one. <laughs> Next slide, please. Uh, this is a view up, this is the southern wall, south, southeastern corner actually of the Temple Mount is right here. So we're looking somewhat to the north. These are all graves, cemetery that have been built over the years. The Mount Olives is up here, and you actually we were actually coming down. So we, the the last picture was from taken from over there. Remember that um, mosque, by the way, up there. Next slide, please. There's that mosque again, and this is the in in Israel they've placed churches, and these started clear back in the second third century, especially um, when. When Caesar's um, grandma accepted Christ, mo mother, excuse me, accepted Christ, then she actually came to, to, to Jerusalem and she started noting all these historical sites and they started building churches. And this church represents the location where Jesus is believed to have looked out over the city of Jerusalem and started to weep as he'd prayed that they would come back him and how often he'd been rejected by them. See, Jesus has been in Jerusalem a multitude of times and he's coming there again and he realizes he's coming there to the very people that are turning him away and he will die for them. And that's uh, the church that's been built up there. This is a picture we're actually standing just to the north of the Temple Mount um, looking out across. And, there, and I think I have one more slide, don't I? Ah, yes. This also is taken up from the Temple Mount. And um, memory. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, of course. Okay. This whole area here is referred to as the Mount of Olives. Up on the top there was probably Bethphage, which you're going to hear in our text in a few moments. And then this is the church that's been built over the Garden of Gethsemane, the place where Jesus prayed. Remember, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, which is part of the Mount of Olives, and he prayed there on the night before he died on the cross. <clears throat> Thank you, Russ. I try to give you that scene a little bit. Um, if, and, and Luke 13, 34 to 35, it says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and, and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <coughs> That might be a passage you want to look at this week and even reflect on as you think about our country or the things that are becoming desolate in our house because we have left the Lord. You examine that and see what Jesus shows to you. The context of the text that we're going to look at the today and beginning with Mark 11, 1 to 7, and we're going to go all the way through verse 19. But the context is, as I said, Jesus is preparing to enter Jerusalem. He's made this, the uh, seven-hour walk from Jericho, which we saw last week. Jericho out there, as I tried to show you on the map, out there by the Dead Sea. It's the, the city that's kind of a gateway city into the Holy Land, into Israel. Remember, it was the city that was destroyed. The walls were knocked down as Israel came to take over the promised land. They walked around Jer Jericho and knocked the walls down by the power of God. Well, Jesus did his last miracle in Jericho. He also had an incredible encounter with a short guy named Zacchaeus and, and welcomes salvation into Zacchaeus' home as he goes to, to, to eat there. And then he leaves Jericho, and with his disciples, he heads up to Jerusalem. On the way up there, here's what Matthew tells us is, ha is, is what happened. Mark 11, 1 to 7. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage 
and Bethany, which are literally like this, okay? They're, they're, they're just right next to each other. Uh, interesting thing about both of these communities is, um, and Bethany being the key one of the two, but they're a Sabbath's walk from the temple. <laughs> See, there's only certain far you, distance that you can walk on the Sabbath. So these are a Sabbath's walk. Uh, less than two miles uh, walk out to there. And they're a place where there's, uh, there's olive trees and there's palm trees and, and quite a lot of um, vegetation around there. And it says, uh, as they approached, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you taking this colt outside? The Lord say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway, just as they had been told. And as they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered, as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus, Threw their cloaks on it, he sat on it. 500 years earlier, Zechariah had prophesied that the Messiah would enter Zion, would enter.